Hey guys, I'm going to be talking about five utility applications that I use on an everyday basis to help me become more productive as a developer. These apps aren't developer specific, but since I do code every day, I am looking at it from the perspective of a developer. With that being said, the five applications are a mix of free and paid applications. Just like many of you, I love free applications, but there are certain applications that are just worth paying for. We're going to take a deeper dive at these five applications and I'll show you how I use them on an everyday basis. Talk to you then. The first application I'm going to be talking about is Alfred. Alfred is an efficient way to use hotkeys and keywords to perform operations on your Mac OS. I really like using Alfred a lot because of two specific features. The first is the Finder ability, and I'm aware that Finder does exist in the Mac OS already, but for me personally, it's just been very efficient in terms of finding files. So if I say find um, documents, it's gonna give me options to find documents. And if I'm looking for specific applications, I could say Alfred, or I could say Spectacle or any other applications that I want to find. The second feature I really like about Alfred is the clipboard ability. So here I can keep a history of all my copied information. So if I control command C here, it'll show the Alfred for Mac here. If I just copy here and show it here, and then it gives me the ability to paste information freely. So I could just say command V and it will just show you and be more productive with custom actions to control your Mac. So there are a lot more features to Alfred that I highly recommend you diving into, but these are the two main features that I really enjoy when using Alfred. So monkey in the room, how much does this cost? So if I click buy the power pack, a single user license is 23 pounds or 39 pounds for a free lifetime upgrades. I'm personally using the 23 pounds one and to convert that to USD, it costs about $27. It is a bit of a steep price to pay, but honestly, I use this every day and I haven't looked back since. I would highly recommend getting uh, one less coffee per week and trying this application out. It is free to use first and if you find yourself enjoying it, then I highly recommend buying the single license. The second application I want to talk about is Spectacle and don't worry, this application is free. And what this does is it provides me an easy way to move my windows from one side to the other or move it into quadrants. I have really found this feature to be super helpful when I'm coding at a cafe and I'm only using one monitor. Um, generally when I'm in the office, I have a few monitors, so it's not as big of a problem, but when I'm at a cafe and I'm looking at my code on the one side and trying to see the browser changes on the other. It's just really annoying to keep moving back and forth. I'm actually using Spectacle right now. So what's really cool is that I can move my windows from left to right using some hotkeys. And another one that I really enjoy using is moving them into quadrants. So I can do this, 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 this. And lastly, you could go full screen. This is not a utility tool specific for developers. I know a bunch of my friends that could totally take advantage of using Spectacle because their window management is insane and it really makes me cringe. So if you're ever struggling with window management, I highly recommend Spectacle. It's free and easy to use. The third application that I think is money is ScreenFlow for Mac. What ScreenFlow does is it gives you a easy way to take a screenshot, but with some really, really special features. I'm going to take a screenshot of this little image around here. Now that I took the screenshot, you're going to notice that it just stays on the page. With the built-in screenshot application on the Mac OS, it's really annoying because when you take a screenshot, it doesn't stick. It saves into your hard drive and you have to find and figure out where it is. With screen float, your screenshots are actually floating within the space of your workstation. Even if you move between different windows like this, the screen float still stays the same. You can even dim and clear up your images if, as needed. But one of the biggest enjoyments that I have using ScreenFloat, specific for developers actually, is that you can add your images really quickly to your PR. So imagine if I have this repository here and I wanna make an issue. I can create that new issue like usual and to try to paste an image is pretty annoying, right? 
So how do I do it here? If I hover over the image on the bottom left corner, you'll see this uh, image icon and you could literally just drag it in here. Hey, this is my screenshot. Create a title. This is a title and it automatically will attach that image to your issues or whatever. This works for everything, not just GitHub. It works for Slack, it works for pull requests, it works for even iMessage. Honestly, I haven't seen any issue with trying to drag an image to a specific window and it's been really, really helpful for me to just quickly send information to my friends or family and wanting to get quick feedback from them. Going back to the main page, like I said before, the top five apps that I use is a mix of free and paid applications. This one cost $8.99, and I think that's a really, really fair price in terms of how actively I use this application. You could definitely try it out for free, and if you find yourself using it pretty consistently, I would highly recommend um, purchasing it and supporting the developer. The fourth application I really like to use is called Amphetamine, and this is free. What Amphetamine does is it prevents your MacBook from sleeping. I'm actually using it right now here, and currently I am keeping my session active indefinitely, but you can control how long it takes until your computer falls asleep. Right now I set it as indefinitely, so it shows the vertical um, indication that it is currently working. You can turn it off as well by saying end current session, and then it'll flip back horizontally. I'm gonna turn it back on because I don't like my computer sleeping. Um, just some caveats is that if you do have your MacBook unplugged, I've heard from my friends that it does drain a lot of your battery, but it is a small price to pay for keeping your laptop awake. The last app I recommend you using is called Notion. And I started using this recently. I am a big proponent of making sure you keep your tasks somewhat organized. I've used Todoist, Wonderlist, and many different various productivity workspaces, but I found Notion to be very clean and elegant, and it has a lot of features. You could create to-do lists, you could create a tasks list, you could even create a travel itinerary page if you wanted to. I'm not going to show you my personal workspace, but it is free to use for one user. Try it out, test it out, you could do a lot of different things like creating a to-do list, creating a planner, and if you are willing to pay to have collaborators and teams, I think they do have a pricing plan for that as well. Right, unlimited members, a thousand block storage, five megabytes upload limit, and bulk export. So that's the free plan, but as you get more and more members on your team, or if you like to add more premium features, the, the price I think is pretty fair, but uh, to each their own, right? So yeah, those are the five applications that I like to use on an everyday basis. I hope at least one application was worth downloading and trying out. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below, like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time. See you then.